Good morning, folks. We've got space weather, earth weather alerts, science news from volcanoes out into deep space. Well, let's get started at spaceweathernews.com and find the last 24 hours on our star were very quiet, and that is despite a large active region on the earth-facing side. We have had no eruptive behavior, no solar flares, but for the small B-class fluctuations from that large group. And most of those are coming from the small accelerations of plasma along the umbral magnetic fields. As they accelerate, they emit at higher frequencies. And so we look at the active region itself. Still leaves us with one large umbra leading the plot of surface magnetic instability. It would still need significant development behind it to begin significant flaring. The only other note on our star at the moment is the southern coronal hole. Not sure if this stream will impact our planet or sail to the south of us, Either way, it would be a minor event. The solar wind we do have was quite variable the last day. Nothing scary in the stream intensity, but those fluctuations did challenge our magnetic field stability a bit in the last two days. Let's go to the United States where multiple weather alerts begin. First, as the Carolinas are taking severe weather this evening, the snowstorm building in the northwest is a monster. Over the next 36 hours, a major spring snow event is coming to about half the country, and as it begins to access the warmer, energetic Gulf waters on Thursday, severe weather will begin along the convergence line, possibly with tornadoes and derecho-like wind events. Speaking of things that move very fast, an incredible study on pyroclastic flows has demonstrated that their incredible speed is due to a liquid sublayer beneath the gaseous, dusty cloud, and beneath that is an even thinner layer of superheated gas that's acting like a lubricant between the flow and the ground leading to those fast motions. Up next, Azure, finally launched. We are now just awaiting the results of the solar wind earth electrics coupling. The chemical releases look almost alien from the sounding rockets there. So folks, we know that one of the main ways to erupt a massive CME is to have the fields collide and snap above a sunspot. But what happens while the X-ray flash blocks the fine detail and minutia of the ejection process? The erupting bulb, immediately takes on the electromagnetic force of the larger fields and current within them, all while a re-emergence of the fields during the ejection further propels the eruption into space. Beautiful magnetohydrodynamics there. If you missed our short video yesterday, it is a must watch. In less than four minutes, we hear how a critical piece of galactic physics is missing and how its primary effects are electromagnetic on galactic plasma. Big thanks to Dr. Budker for his time on that one. Up next is a planet allegedly 13 times bigger than Jupiter. I will go ahead and call Kangaroo Court with a story two years ago about a star that would fit inside the rings of Saturn. What's a star? What's a planet? What's a moon? They don't really know unless it's obvious, and at those dividing lines it may simply be a factor of energy and chemistry. Last but not least, anytime a professor sticks his neck out to offer a new cosmology that does not require dark matter, we'll give them an audience and at very least applaud the effort this one based on laws of motion. Folks, we greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.